Hello, everybody. Welcome back Hello. to Sunday Tea Book, episode five, five of The Classic of Tea. Whew. We are diving into chapter three today. But before we do that, uh, let us tell you what we're brewing. In exchange, you tell us what you're brewing. <laughs> we're brewing. Go ahead. Uh, black tea made with... Uh, Dragonwell Longjing cultivar mm. is called the Jiuqu Hongmei. I always forget that. That's such an interesting mm. thing about this yeah, tea. Yeah, a very famous and popular green tea, but now it's made into black tea. Yeah, perhaps less so. Uh, uh, not as popular. Lan is a well-known black yeah, tea, but yeah, because the name is not very like it's not just a, mm. it has a romantic name like Nine Jiuqu uh, Hongmei Curl. It's a curly tea. It kind of describes its name. Homemade, the red uh, flower, kind mm. of a wax flower, you call that? Yeah, wax flower. It's a blossom. I think. It's a beautiful. We've blossom. had this tea. I remember when meat. I was first getting into tea in 2014. This is one of the teas that we had on mm. our uh, menu at that time, and it's still there. You can check that out at genti.ca and pick yourself up some and sip along with us. Um, looking forward to sipping this. That's for sure. Um, all right, so let me tell you a little bit for those of you that are new, what is Sunday Tea Book? Hello, all of you who've joined us on Instagram and hello mm. everybody out there in YouTube land. Uh, what is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is a uh, weekly uh, live that Jen and I do where we take a book, paper, or an article that is full of great information about Chinese tea but is not accessible in the West either because it has not been translated or the translation is clunky and it maybe just hasn't had enough light shone on it. So we take that book, paper, or article and we shine a light on it and we translate it or fix up some of the misunderstandings in the existing translation. Uh, so that's what Sunday Tea Book is. So you might think to yourself, well, geez, why do you get online and, and translate live? And that's a great question because it seems really maybe a little bit <laughs> snores or boring, right? But over the years, as I've worked with Chen in asking her questions and digging into various aspects of tea and tea literature and tea culture, the source of the words, the root of the words, where they come from, what they mean re requires more than just the right English word. There's so much knowledge and all that background that we decided, hey, let's just do it here with you guys so that two things can happen. Uh, you get to be witness to that dynamic, cultural, rich cultural information. And you guys can ask us questions directly right here, right now that pop into mm. your mind that maybe I didn't think of, maybe Jen didn't think of. Mm. And, and we need help with translation. And we need <laughs> a little help too, not pro translators. So um, that is why we do it live and it is super fun. Uh, it's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to continue to do the classic of tea. Uh, such a famous book. If you think about any Chinese tea book, I think that would be the one that pop into your head. And, uh, and it's a tricky one. Just itself, mm. because it's ancient from 1200 years ago, itself has like 30, almost 40 different versions of it. Meaning, they, though the most uh, content are identical, sometimes in keywords and different words, they could be different, affecting the meaning of the book. And lots of uh, use of words, a lot of uh, content would be quite strange or foreign to people of us. Uh, if you hear a little noise in the background, it, the skies have just opened up here and we can actually hear the rain hitting the house from here. So you might hear a little bit of that too. So guys, on Instagram, we've got so we do the we do the Sunday tea book. The core the core part of it is of course Lu, Lu Yu's classic of tea. Did I interrupt you? Were you going to jump no, back no. in? But of course, we always have a little bit of fun. We warm up with something we call tea trivia time. Folks on Instagram, you got to jump over to YouTube to participate in that. It is super fun. We just do a little lighthearted trivia to kind of uh, warm up and get into the vibe of being total tea nerds. That is fun. Uh, before you jump out of Instagram, hit the like button or the love button or whatever you hit on Instagram to give our video a little bit of visibility. On YouTube, if you know you're going to love the episode, you can hit that thumbs up already too. And of course, the best way to support us is to head on over to genti.ca, pick yourself up some tea and sip along with us. All the teas are uh, published on the genti.ca slash Sunday Tea Book online tea course. Link in the description down below. 
They're not there at this second, but I promise I'll put them there. You can pick yourself up a little grab bag of sip along tea and sip the same tea we're having as we go through. We always broadcast which teas we're having with every upcoming episode. So you could do that. That would be a fantastic way to support the channel. And yeah, and we're diving back into chapter three. Is that right? We're up to chapter yes. three in the classic of tea. It's a very fun chapter. It's called the process. Oh, wow. Process? So making. Process yeah, making. process oh, is a really good is a great English word for that. So yeah. it's it's making, but it's not the preparation mm. of the beverage like what we just did. It's more the exactly. drying of the leaf, the processing of the leaf. Yeah, mm, let me find my notes. Oh, Igor and Fernanda are here <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, processing. Oh, here we go. I found my notes. I was uh, having a little heart attack. I don't want to purely just based on my memory. Anyways. Uh, I just process. Want to just help. I don't. I thought you might need <laughs> a memory jog there. Yes, yes, yes. Just summarize the uh, chapters before I dive into the notes. Uh, oh, we already published the translation on the website, and I think mm. I updated the link in the description, description. down below. Yeah, yeah, that you can click on and check on that. So overall, this chapter talked about. Are we still live on Instagram? Yeah, we gotta we gotta actually do tea trivia first. Right. We gotta do some tea trivia. Sorry, we almost got ahead of ourselves. <laughs> the storm. I'm gonna tell folks. So Instagram, I'm gonna say goodbye. So this won't apply to you. I'm gonna first say bye bye to Instagram. Jump over to YouTube for tea trivia time. That's coming next. Bye bye Instagram. It's storming outside, and I guess so it's quite distracting. Actually, yes, I have to say, I'm it those is. People, I love storm. I always run out and to watch the storm, or even get a little wet. I just love the storm. And uh, mm. I have to try to shut that part of the room. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is tremendously distracting. I have Sorry. to agree about that. Ooh, um, have some tea and calm down. I did want to comment about, about the tea. Now that it's just us cool YouTube people. <laughs> let us know what you're sipping. Give us some of your tasting notes. This one is surprisingly smokier than I remember it. Yeah. I remember it used to have a fairly decent chocolatey nose uh, when you smelled the liquor aroma. Yeah, it That's, ends with the sweetness, but it, yeah. it starts with that uh, a little bit that roasting flavor. Oh, this is really nice. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And it does have that. It still has that what I called, for lack of a mm. better word, that mixed berry sweetness kind of at the end. Yeah, you didn't have a chance to smell the dry, the warmed up uh, dry oh, leaf. Yeah. But that was so. That one has that uh, honey sweet, like a berry, really ripe mm, berry. That sweet. natural sweetness. Yeah, yeah. Mm, very nice. No, it's more of that uh, smoky, uh, roasting flavor. Yes, it still right. has that sort of natural berry uh, element. Undertone. Really nice. Mm. Really nice. All right, guys, so let's dive in. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I'm going to check my notes. Talked about, yeah. Okay. Oh, somebody has some uh, dance home just now. Yeah, Lucas. Lucas Shroud, I guess. Just finished some of that. Nice. Cool. Thanks for sharing that with us, Lucas. Let Hello, us know how it was. And, uh, Igor, welcome back. It's another week again. Let's just dive in. Let's yeah. hit the tea trivia like yeah. with like a like a ton of bricks right yeah. now. All right, guys, I've made you wait long enough. Let's dive in. Put on your thinking caps and let's do <laughs> tea trivia. trivia time. All right, folks. Tea trivia time is a time when we, you and I, uh, oh yeah, I got to do all my button pressing and stuff. Oh goodness. <laughs> is a time when we uh, we just warm up with a few fun little questions, uh, just enjoying each other's company. You will of course get bragging rights uh, as you answer questions correctly. To answer the question, it's going to be a multiple choice. Just enter the number one to four and press enter. It's best if you don't enter anything else so that the computer won't miss out on your correct or maybe incorrect answer. Hopefully not. I always like to throw in a few tricky ones, but it doesn't matter if you get the answer right. Just take a guess. This is not to show your T muscles or anything. It's just to have fun, loosen up, maybe review some material, maybe just be goofy and, quir goofy and quirky. So here we go, guys. Let's start rolling with tea trivia time. Question number one. From China Tea, so that's Sunday Tea Book from a long time ago, China Tea Episode 5, the book by Jian Li Wu, the three smells in tea appraisal are one, there are actually four smells, not three. Is it two? Hua Wen, the flower aroma. Yue Wen, 
the leaf aroma, and Nya Wen, the bud aroma. Ooh, that one got clipped off a little bit. Or is it Gan Wen, the dry aroma, Ru Wen, the hot aroma, and Len Wang, the cold aroma? Or is it four, the first smell, the second smell, and the third smell? Just punch your answer in, hit enter. Take a wild guess if you're not sure, just having some fun here. And if you do want to uh, look back, if you didn't see China Tea, that is a, it's a bit of a monster book, 36 episodes, but it is packed with great information. So, and especially episode five is a fantastic one to home in your tasting skills and really get the most out of your tea. All right, guys, get those answers in. I see them rolling in. And I see that Igor took a guess at answer number two. I think there's a little bit of lag maybe going on, but the correct answer is indeed number three. So it's the dry aroma smell, the hot aroma smell, and the cold aroma are the three smells of tea. Check out that chapter to review the whole thing. Uh, we're gonna have one more question about it though. A little sneak preview there. Sipping the tea time. Fernanda got a, a good guess in there at the last minute. Similar to Yan, but a lighter, tangier. Oh, nice. Tasting notes for his tea. Ah, stone fruit. All actually. right. A good, water, a good water content for a finished tea. So this question is asking about how much water is in the dry leaf. A good water content in a finished tea leaf is one. Quality finished tea should have no water content. Is it two? Anything under 50%. Three. Anything above 2% but below 25%? Or is it four, above 5%? So we're talking about the water content in a finished tea leaf that you would find in your, you know, the bag that you would order from us. You know, you pull out that dry leaf. There's some moisture in it, believe it or not. How much would be appropriate? Mm, how a dry is the leaf? How dry is the leaf? And so punch in your answers, hit enter, obviously as quickly as you can because there seems to be a bit of lag. But uh, if you want to, re to uh, check out some interesting information about this fact, check out the tea storage video. It has some really interesting info about water in tea. And uh, way to go, Igor and Fernanda. You guys both got it right. That's all the guesses came through right. Let's have a winner sound. Way to go. Yeah, so check out that. I'll put the link in the, uh, in the description down below so you can check it out. Uh, tea storage has some interesting information about moisture in tea leaf, finished tea leaf. Awesome. This uh, black tea is so calming and the storm, really nice combo. Mm. All right, I promised you another question from China Tea Episode 5 and here it is. From China Tea Episode 5, tea appraisal requires one, really expensive teaware, two, a microscope, a camera, and an interferometer. Three. Is it three looks, three smells, three tastes, and three aftertastes to obtain the full image of the tea? Or is it four? Three infusions, three smells, three sips, and three swishes to obtain the full image of the tea? All right, there you have it. A little bit fun, a little bit quirky. I'm trying not to laugh because I might give away which ones are which ones are bogus. Take a guess if you're not sure. And uh, I strongly recommend that whole series of uh, that whole book that we've translated on our website at genti.ca slash Sunday Tea Book Online Tea Course. Link down below. <laughs> so pro. <laughs> it's an excellent, excellent reference. Beginner, excellent. Expert, excellent. Oh my gosh, Igor and Lucas nailed it. Way to go. <laughs> Who else? Anybody else? Fernando was close. Fernando was close. A little bit behind the, uh, behind the wire. All right, guys, we're cruising along in tea trivia time here, sipping on Jiu Hongmei, enjoying a vicious thunderstorm outside, which is slowly subsiding, and looking forward to Lu Yu Classic of Tea. All right, here we are. Question four. The tradition, the traditional typo on my part there. The traditional Chinese calendar is what sort of calendar? Is it one, solely lunar? Is it two, solar? Is it three, lunar? Or is it four, Gregorian? The traditional Chinese calendar is what sort of calendar? Is that traditional Chinese or Chinese traditional? Does that make a difference for you? 
like English speaking? Probably would normally say Chinese traditional. No, I don't know. Traditional Chinese, I think. I'm not sure, but you got to definitely put the AL on the end so it's traditional and not the tradition. Right, right, right. <laughs> what about so why is this important? You might be like, who cares? A lot of the uh, T terms that you'll hear about when to pluck and whatnot are actually based in this calendar. So it is actually kind of pertinent for us T nerds to know this. So fire your answers off. I see lots of guesses here for three and four, so pretty good stuff. Even a guess from Lucas for one. Let's see what the magical machine says. I've got lots of time, so I gotta keep talking. I was gonna say. And way to go, Lucas. Solely Lunar is correct. Um, good guess, Igor and Fernanda. It's pretty tricky. A lot of people believe that the chi traditional Chinese calendar is a lunar calendar, but it's actually a solely lunar. As a farming culture, they had to really uh, adapt their calendar to lock into the growing seasons sort of uh, very accurately in very early times. So uh, great work, everybody. We are crushing it today. Let's go on to the next question. Next week's sip along tea is, is it one, <laughs> Zongzi Kimen black tea? Is it two, Wu Yi Tsi Lan? Is it three, Guizhou green tea? Or is it four, 2008 Lao Shu Shampuar? Looking forward to next week. What tea will we be brewing? And don't forget, you can always go to genti.ca and pick up your tea that we're brewing next week and in the weeks beyond. And uh, <laughs> Fernanda says, oh, soots. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right. Is that Spanish for? Shoot, maybe, or darn. <gasps> anyway, so next week's tea, which one will it be? Zongzi Kim in Black, Wu Yi Tsi Lan Oolong, Guizhou Green Tea, or 2008 Lao Shu Shen Pu Ar? <laughs> I don't even know. I know. I know this week. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm those. Curious to know what everyone is yeah, sipping. I was going to ask you, is that solely lunar or loony solar? Is there a difference? I think it's solely lunar, and I don't think there's a difference, but I think, oh, the answers are in, and uh, Fernanda got it right. Oh, Ooh, way to go, Fernanda. And uh, Lucas and Igor, good guess. We are having Guizhou Green a few weeks after the Lao Shu Shen, so don't worry if you're looking forward to it. It is coming up. All right, the computer is busy tabulating your final results. Let's see how everybody did, and then we will dive into the classic of tea. <sighs> we have severe thunderstorm warning. Yay! Mm. What I'm, <laughs> all right, let's see. Igor nails it up with... Uh, oh, cool. I can't see very well, but it looks like two correct two. answers from Igor, Lucas, oh. and Fernanda. I was going to say it anyways, but you guys are all place. winners in my book. Way to go. What an awesome tea trivia time we had. And now we can dive into the classic of tea. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Jen. No, just kidding. Just kidding. No pressure. That's such a okay. scary thing to say to someone. Right? <laughs> Way to go, guys. That was so fun. Yeah. And I really just love that emoji. I found that super Oh, cool. Cute. Yeah, that is cute. Right? I thought oh, it's, it is yeah. kind of a dancing emoji. I thought it was this at first. Oh no. But I don't think so. I think it's a dancing yeah, emoji. No, it's like that. That's, that's a it's kind tall. of a cool ending thing. I love yep. that. Yep. Anyway, totally. back to the chapters. Mm. Mm. Before we start, I do want to give a little public service announcement. So, okay. severe thunderstorms. Recently, we had a, oh. a massive windstorm in the region and, you know, the whole, like the whole city was out of power just about. They mm. fixed everything up. There's a reasonable chance that the power will go out Oh, and this right. broadcast will end abruptly. So if it does, just know that's what happened. We're okay here, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Very likely okay. Because <laughs> the last one, our 60 something years old the maple split in half. And we were fine, but. Sad times, the maple was not fine. Yeah. Hopefully now everything's fine. It looks like it died down already. Okay. So back to the chapters. Chapter three is a very interesting one. I guess I say that for every chapter because I found every chapter is very interesting once you dive into the itty bitty little details of the book. So in general, it's taught it's called process, but uh, they talk more than just the process of mm. like in the say factory or in the room when it's making. Mm -hmm. He started by talking about the plucking tea. You know when to pluck. 
And this when, besides when for us to go, like during the day, what kind of day, also talk about for the plant. Is plant mature or how many new shoots decide for the plant when to pluck? And also he mentioned some uh, steps about a process, but the majority of this chapter somehow dedicated to uh, tea quality differentiation or mm. say evaluation. Right, appraisal sort of stuff. Exactly. Mm. So name is a process, but there's if you um, read the English portion, you know this is a small portion. In Chinese, if it's actually just one sentence, 16 characters. Right, which that's is pretty it. profound, right? Because yeah, this is a topic you could ostensibly write yeah, a so, book or several books on. Exactly. Right? So that's kind of an interesting thing in terms of how detailed he is overall. Like as we proceed to later chapters, you notice how he's so picky about water, tools, everything. Like even the process tool, he was pretty like t detailed about well, what's going on and stuff. But in terms of processes, how was a chapter that we would probably expect a little bit more talking about the process was so minimal. One of mm. the uh, guess or why it happens is very likely that he is a tea connoisseur in terms of tasting mm. and making tea rather than a tea producer or somebody right, who right. is expert in tea making. So he could give you the flow chart. He could tell right, you how Right, like, like we see online when we Google tea processing, exactly. right? The basic steps. Yeah. Mm. So he could tell you how the tea is roughly processed, but in terms of the details of uh, we also touched a bit on this uh, on last episode that in terms of detail, how how much do you steam the tea? How long? What's the temperature? How mm. thick is the leaf you're gonna put in the steamer? Same with press the tea. How hard do you press the tea? Right. Uh, you know how much leaf you put to press the tea. The details like that are all missing. And mm -hmm. in terms of tea making, those are the critical details, right? Yes. They're yes. really fundamental. Like, and I think we had a tea trivia question even about that mm. last week was, uh, is there enough information to mm. perfectly reproduce the tea? Exactly. Not quite, not in this book. Yeah. I thought of something though, maybe it's like, so maybe he's more of the connoisseur and he just, uh, and he just put, you know, what was kind of necessary as a basic. Mm. Maybe like he has that other book, Shui Ping, which mm. is where he dives it. It's a whole book about water for tea. Yeah. So maybe he has another one that's lost forever that was detailed processing too. It's possible, right? We don't know. Oh, no. But anyway, just want to point it out. It's a, a quite a interesting phenomenon that uh, mm. it's not, he didn't dive as much into how to make tea. And um, another thing in the book, it says, what's the best time to plug tea? Literally, it says February, March, and April. But that is a on um, Chinese traditional calendar. Traditional mm -hmm. Chinese, Chinese, which one? Both. Traditional Chinese. The traditional Chinese, Chinese traditional calendar. <laughs> yes, and the time is there. It's usually about a week. Uh, sorry, a month uh, ahead. Uh, behind. 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 Okay, behind. Because right? in, behind in the regular calendar, calendar, it would be more like March, March April, May. April, April right? May. Yeah. So yeah. that would be the the Chinese tradition, the traditional Chinese right. traditional calendar. Mm is about a month behind the, uh, the, the Western calendar. There. Yeah, so if you go to the website and see the translation, I changed that to our current, uh, mm. Uh, mm. The current calendar. And just want to mention this, because um, a lot of times now people will say Lunar New Year, or Chinese New Year, they call that Lunar New mm. Year now. Mm. And uh, as if it's a lunar calendar, this right. calendar is a lunar, a lunar solar, mm -hmm. solely lunar, it's the combination yes. of Earth and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Moon. Actually, that's where that lunar perception comes from, is mm. the, the quote-unquote Chinese New Year, which many are now calling the Lunar New Year, mm -hmm. um, which should be the solely Lunar New Year, <laughs> technically. <laughs> yeah, and that's why those, uh, very, uh, those uh, tea terms in terms of time that we're very familiar with, like a Timmy, mm -hmm. for example, is not a swing that much. It's, uh, April the 4th or 5th, so like one to two days based on the sun kind of thing. That's mm. uh, based on the sun, the angle with the earth, sun line and stuff. Right, right, right. So the swing is not so much, it's always fixed in that one, two days tops. 
Yeah, right, right. It's not the, swinging one month. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, cool. That's that. And I'd like to brew some tea before I continue. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm a little bit thirsty. This is a really soothing tea. I like that. Yeah, it's interesting to think about this book when we talk about... Uh, when we deep dive into it, like you were saying, how there's just one sentence, 16 characters on tea processing. And to remember, it's, it is 1,200 years old, so there are lots of unknowns. I mean, just we just can't fill in the blanks anymore. The, the, we didn't discover everything from 1,200 years ago. We don't have a complete record, right? So we, we do the best we can. Mm. It's also interesting how how useful how useful and similar it is even though we're about to dive into some big differences but uh, right. it's still very interesting as a tea lover to look at 1200 years of tea production and just think about that uh, for a minute mm. it's pretty profound a lot of times uh, much of the information in the book actually uh, matches what we still know nowadays and mm. some of the practice we still um, do. And even some of the practices we don't do, mm. we can still understand through the difference in process that it's sensible. Yeah. You know, yeah. Which is interesting. Mm. As you know, I really, I'm not very good at describing tea. Mm. flavor in terms of flavor for me i've just that a few key words that i can pick out but mm. what i'm what i care about tea is most mm. we've been to uh, the tea uh, some you know tea tastings and tea parties and stuff that's what i feel the most uh, a certain teas you brew up i have a sip i'm not much interested it's so flat I, it's, mm. it can be full of flavor you know, uh, this aroma. flavor, that flavor, this aroma, right. it's flat. In my mouth, it's like, a, it's a watery, it mm. sinks. Mm. Like, a, like a, it just like a disappears in terms of the mm. uh, mouth feel, it's empty. Mm. I don't know. Like those teas I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, it's... But this tea, if you tell me, can I pick out 20 <laughs> like flavor notes? Uh, uh, I cannot think about so many, but just the that moussey is the texture is there. The texture There's is a good no word. Mm. hollowness in the whole structure of the of the profile. There's, you know, it's just uh, I don't know. It's a different way for me to taste tea than a lot of a uh, no picking. So don't expect too much from me to describe teas. It's yeah. all. Your yeah, that falls on me, but I do find it very hard to describe mouthfeel. And I think whether or not, you know, you think you are in touch with mouthfeel, I think you are because it's just part of the, you know, you might interpret it as flavor, but how the mm. liquor feels in your mouth and on your mm. throat is sort of... Or how the flavor performs in the mouth. Yes. Like yes. we drink patchouli tea because it's a hot summer patchouli mm. tea. Does it have mouthfeel? No, it's water. Mm. It's full of patchouli flavor everywhere, but yes. it doesn't have most feel like Yes, you know, it's different. Anyways, sorry about the talk back to the chapters uh, Lu Yu mentioned something about plucking. He's talking about plucking uh, In general is from two aspects one is when to plug for the tea plant when the tea plants are ready to plug. And the second uh, aspect is for people. What is a good day to pluck the tea? Mm. So when talking about the tea plants, uh, when to pluck is divided into two major uh, situations for the tea plants. Is what's the soil condition? What's the growing condition overall? Is it in a, a rich soil? Like, mm. a, um, or is it in a very, say, barren soil or high competitive soil, like uh, with lots of weeds and stuff? That def kind of uh, affects when you pluck. If the if the plants grow in a really rich uh, soil, you can just pluck whenever it reaches about twelve to fifteen centimeters. About mm -hmm. this, this long, I would say. 
Right. Right. Or if it is in a poor soil condition, you might want to wait a bit till they have several three to four new shoots. Then choose the strongest, the, the strongest new shoots to pluck when you reach the lens. So um, right. it feels like, a, oh, that's something kind of interesting. It's not it's so intuitive, but if you grow veggies and or you grow any plants and you consistently and harvest you're harvesting them, on them, right? We're trimming it, you will realize. Oh, what he said is very correct. Exactly how we do even nowadays of mm. how to sustainably uh, pluck the plant when they're in good conditions. You can plant and uh, you can pluck and pick on the plant, and uh, they, it won't damage it too much. But if it's uh, in high stress, you want to give it more chance to grow more leaves, so that when yeah. you pluck it, it won't damage the whole plant itself. So. Um, I don't know. As a gardener, when I think about what he said, I was like, ha, huh, exactly how I do with my leafies. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wait a bit, sometimes I just, you know, when they're mature enough, I can just buzz cut and I don't have to worry. So that's the difference in terms of, I, I guess, gardeners uh, might have a little bit more reson, like, would resonate with this part a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I found, I put these pictures up. I kind of surprised Jen with these pictures. I found these from, uh, from uh, one of Jen and Jen's mom, Jen and Jen Lee's trip to uh, to the Luyu uh, Wild mm. Tea Garden. Now it mm. used to be an Imperial Tea Garden, mm. and now it's kind in of Zhejiang gone province. feral. And, yeah, feral? in Zhejiang Province, yeah. feral or wild. But the bottom picture here is is uh, is uh, captioned perfect tea soil, mm. which I think a lot of people would be shocked by this, right? So I yeah. thought it'd be worth talking about, and this is probably. Um, again, this was a garden known to Lu Yu himself, so this is probably what he's talking about in terms of good soil. And you might think, geez, that's awfully rocky and doesn't right. look like my garden at all. Right, right. No, it's quite different. They don't like the black soil. Yeah. Like what we think is rich, it's not dream enough and yeah. uh, mineral rich. It's quite very different the soil that tea tree loves yeah. uh, compared to at least us in say Ontario, Canada. Yeah. The situation, the whole landscape, uh, the whole soil composition is so different. Yeah. And that's why places like Wu Yi, you know, mm. uh, which is very cliffy and rocky, mm. have such great conditions. Now, I don't know if he would like the top picture, which is what his garden has become. A little bit more mm. full of weeds and stuff now. That's actually not too bad, right? Because it's got yeah. biodiversity. But So this is the balance. Talk about mm. biodiversity. Mm. It doesn't mean you have to be filled with Weed. parasitic weeds yeah right? yeah so the situation has to be like in the maintainable with the diversity mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the situation there it's not so bad because I think the picture shows some but when I'm there you can see it's not just a glance of this uh, land it's also look at the plant itself is the plant itself happy is it right. having you know as gardeners Does it look probably, luscious, yeah how healthy. is the leaf is mm. it suffering how is the stand uh, the theory goes back to the plant itself. Right. Right. Cool. Okay. And okay. Then comes to something very interesting. That is very the contradictory concept of what we learn nowadays. Talking mm. about when to pluck. Uh, if you've been learning about tea and stuff, and uh, learn about uh, how is the tea being plucked and on what weather. So Lu Yu says, don't pluck tea on sunny days. No, don't <laughs> pluck tea when, how do you say that? Uh, even when it's uh, sunny days with a cloud, how would you say that? Phrase yeah, that even way. when it's uh, sunny it's with cloud. It's really cloud. picky. It's basically yeah. you have to be clear sky. Yeah. Uh, with a cloud, bit... don't pluck. Yeah, which would be fine if you were growing tea in Ontario, except <laughs> yeah. you can't grow tea in Ontario. <laughs> so that's a very interesting. It seems mm. really ultra strict consider where the tea is grown, that kind of uh, thing. And very likely he's referring to the standard at that time for the royal tribute tea, which, mm. you know, when it comes to royal tribute tea, they don't care about cost, they don't care about anything, they care right. about perfection. At least at the time, what we consider perfection. Right. Right? So uh, obviously it doesn't apply to nowadays. Otherwise, the tea production 
quantity would be ridiculously small. Right, and the the leaf would just spoil on the bush, right? I mean, mm. so for the folks who aren't as familiar, um, and I'm not that familiar, I've only been a couple times, but we're talking about a super hot, humid region that's just by the nature of how hot and humid it is, it's inevitably generally cloudy, overcast, misty, a lot of rain in the spring, right? Mm. So to pick on a clear blue sky, sunny day, I don't know, one, two a year, at least in that season, you know, it would be something. Maybe I'm exaggerating. I don't know the number, yeah, but it's still, really picky. Like, yeah. you know, to get these bushes plucked, you've got to be on them, you know, on a <laughs> semi-daily basis. Yeah. You know, they're growing pretty quick when the spring really warms up. Yeah. And the second thing he said is a pluck when there's a dew, morning dew on the leaves, which mm. is pretty much the opposite of what we do now. Right. We don't want any water on the leaves. If there's a dew on the leaves, we wait till the sun comes out and the water evaporates, Psst. it all dries, then we go pluck. Uh, he's not wrong. Why? Because right. if we consider where uh, his time and the process of the tea at that time, they do a steam. A steam probably does a uh, very good control of water content. Now, and his steam process, like the step of steaming compared to nowadays, the green tea steaming is very different. Mm. Okay, it's widely different. And uh, even the ancient times, his time, he would be plucking the tea in doing days and uh, sometimes people also pluck tea and wash it and stuff. Something we never do nowadays. And one of the reason is it will affect the aroma of the tea. That's why sometimes you hear people say, oh, some, uh, some producers or tea experts drink a sip of tea and know this tea is plug on the, you know, on a rainy day mm. or on a cloudy day. One of the reason, I don't, I don't like to mystify things. <laughs> it sounds right. so, whoa. Yeah, it sounds like sorcery, right? What yeah. Do, yeah, what does that really mean is water content is high. That affects the aroma. It's more like a, like a water diluted, just to simplify, as if right. water diluted the aroma. So when you um, have tea when the leaves are wet, when you make the tea the end process, you will notice the dullness in the aroma. Mm. Mm. Not like a no aroma, it's the, dawn, the, the, the way the aroma portray itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we never pluck tea when it's wet. But right. at his time, right, besides the steaming, that probably they don't do perfect uh, control of the thing, the re one of the reasons could be because they are going through a lot of process mm. of churning, of crushing and pressing in the end, uh, when it's a tea cake, they use the tea cake, then they boil again and they uh, add a bunch of spice. Maybe that, right. that's just how they make the tea and enjoy tea de kind of uh, decides they are not overly obsessed about the aroma uh, for the finished leaf. And if you're familiar with like the tea process, reading how the tea is roughly done in the Tang Dynasty, you could imagine that tea cake wouldn't smell so aromatic compared to today's dry leaves because of the process. Right, especially if you had all those spices and stuff in it. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So, so that's the... I think we actually did a video of that, right? We tried the tea cake. Yeah, yeah, we had a tea cake that was kind of follow the Louis mm. uh, step of making tea and uh, it was a little cake shape. Mm. Um, and we boiled it. It, would, it tastes pretty good, actually. I like the taste. It's different, but I like the taste. And um, then we add some spice, and that was like a hard no for me. Yeah, <laughs> it was just, uh, it was we're weird. not sure if we might have done it wrong or whatever, but uh, yeah, it was weird. straight up brew was pretty good, but yeah. uh, brew with a bunch of uh, spices, clove and anise and yeah. stuff was uh, it's a ooh, weird. very, very weird. Oh, forgot to mention that we, when we talk about plucking, right, we, uh, the Louis says about 12 to 15 centimeters of a pluck. Mm. And if you look at the lens, it's like, whew. Nowadays, we rarely pluck something of that long. A oolong could be, but uh, right, right. usually not. The lens is uh, very... Yeah, it's very ex pretty extreme, right? Extreme, especially consider, like, uh, compared to green tea, which we pluck a bud with a leaf of like one, two centimeter tops kind of right. thing. It's quite different, and that includes 
for that lens, the for sure, based on the cultivar and stuff, for sure includes lots of sands. Mm. Uh, and it's okay because, again, it's processed. Different process, yes. right? Really and how different. they enjoy that with the powdering and stuff also kind of a require the whole process and the may the, the brewing process kind of a decides that you need some of the stain you need that robust flavor if right. you only use mini tiny mini bud it's not gonna have give you much of the stain especially add those spices and stuff right you wouldn't taste much of the tea right you're gonna need something that can stand up to those mm. and uh and survive mm. yeah Mm. Oh. I wonder what he would think of this tea. Probably wouldn't like that. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's so quite different to that. Because yeah. we have the cake which we cannot say is perfect duplication of all. the tea, nope. but it's quite different than this taste. It really doesn't have any black tea taste. Eh? Not at all more to the dark side if i recall it had a little elements of that dark tea-ish yeah it's dark tea-ish and for a kind of a combination like yeah yeah those, and, those and some green that have a lot of a mm. essence like if from the current six tea category what are the teas it would possibly give you a sneak peek of tang dynasty it would be uh Shenpuar or dark tea mm. yeah mm. because of the process similarity all right, guys. Well, that pretty much wraps up today's episode of Sunday Tea Book. Mm -hmm. um, tune in next week. We're going to continue with the uh, with the rest of Chapter Three. Uh, if you if you like this content, please do give us a thumbs up. It super helps the channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Then you'll know whenever we go live. Um, we also, you may have noticed a couple times, I went over to this screen down, and there's a link down below. You can join our Discord channel where you can interact with Jen and I. Let us know what you're brewing. Ask us random tea questions. We'll do our best to answer. The folks in the community there are also super helpful. So join up, join up down there on the Discord. Uh, on our website at gentea slash cha ren, we have a fantastic uh, magazine that we have uh, two great episodes where we go behind the curtain of Chinese tea, much more in-depth, uh, rich articles about uh, all kinds of topics, the history of Taiguan Yin, uh, Puar Gardens, uh, just uh, great content. So check that out. And most of all, and most importantly, thank you guys for joining us and for watching uh, watching with us for asking questions and just participating. Uh, we really love uh, every Sunday to hop on here and enjoy Sunday Tea Book with you guys. You guys make this whole thing entirely possible. So, uh, and don't forget next week we're sipping 2008 Lao Shu Shen Puar. So uh, head on over to genti.ca, grab yourself some of that so you can sip along with us. I'll try not to choke. <laughs> and everybody, until next time. Thank you. Keep, keep steeping. steeping. Keep waving. <laughs> <laughs>